China's master plan China is currently the world's superpower. We have no shortage of interest in China. The master plan for military power and economic expansion is like turning a blind eye. In this episode, I will talk about a master plan of China, which is sure to catch your eye. In 2013, China suddenly announced a master plan. The plan is called, One Belt One Road, meaning connecting more than 50 countries directly by road and waterway. After the announcement, the issue became the focus of world politics. Widespread discussion of pros and cons began. Again many call it the best plan of the century. So let's get the audience started, stay tuned until the last moment of the video. From the 2nd century BC, goods exported from China were shipped to Europe and Africa. Among the products, silk was relatively high. Hence it came to be known as the Silk Road. Later, when the ship reached the sea, the goods were transported by sea. China is currently expanding these two routes. Going to involve economic communication. The blueprint was brought by Chinese President Xi Jinping himself. Now the question is what is the One Belt One Road issue? The One Belt One Road project is to create an economic zone by connecting the various economic products from China that are transported to the Middle East, Asia, Europe and Africa. OBOR for short. These include roads, waterways and railways. More than 50 countries will be involved in this huge project of thousands of dollars. The project will be divided into two parts. The first part has roads and the second part has waterways. Roads are basically railway and highway roads. More interestingly, these roads will have gas lines and oil pipelines. The question that comes to the minds of many is what is the goal and purpose of this project? The main goal of this project is to keep the wheel of the economy moving by facilitating the huge economic path of the People's Republic of China. On the other hand, the main purpose of the project is to connect China with Eurasia, the Middle East and Africa. Enhancing cultural ties, enhancing mutual cooperation, upholding regional cooperation, implementing better infrastructure and increasing economic viability make the project meaningful. China has announced plans to build infrastructure in countries that do not have good infrastructure. But whether this project will work just as well or whether there are many secrets behind it will become clear in time. Many world leaders have criticized China's plan, saying it is essentially a new imprint on China's ability to maintain its authority in these countries. Improving the South and Southeast is claimed to be the special goal of this project. In other words, China's ultimate goal is to build global dominance by strengthening the economy in the region. Many know that China has already created two corridors as a preliminary step. The first is the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and the other is the India-China-Bangladesh-Myanmar-China Economic Corridor. Analysts have identified these two special economic zones as the initial steps in the master plan. But in the meantime, India has distanced itself from China's plan. I'll talk about that later. Now let's find out how to make this one belt one road in China. China exports its goods in two ways. The other by road is by sea or by sea. So the project will be implemented through two. Work has already begun to collaborate with various states to complete the best project of the 21st century. By road China has created railways with different countries over the last decade or so which are now in operation. For example, there are direct rail links from the city of Janyo in China to Germany, Spain and Iran. One of the important issues in road communication is to connect the countries that do not have seaports. Among the Asian countries are significant. Far-flung African countries are covered. Note that China's main goal is to connect the underdeveloped region as well as to complete the work of the gas line and oil line. One thing to note is that without a supply of oil and gas to the Middle East, it will not be easy to keep China's fast-growing economy afloat. The waterway will be in southern China. China is renting or using seaports in several countries to implement the large-scale project. For example, China has purchased the port of Hambantota from Sri Lanka for 99 years. Also notable among the contracted ports of China are Chittagong Seaport of Bangladesh, Sitwe Port of Myanmar, Gwadar Port of Pakistan, Mail Port of Maldives etc. China attaches great importance to it to facilitate sea travel. Therefore, from the South China Sea to the Bay of Bengal, the Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, a vast economic zone has been planned. Discussions are going on in world politics about the plan announced by China Kartik. Chinese President Xi Jinping is trying to reach an agreement by visiting different countries. India is directly opposing it, America is also silently supporting India. Biden discussed the issue with Japan during a recent trip to Asia. 
They see the project as a step towards China's sole authority. In the superpower, Russia has already supported China. Similar countries are also discussing among themselves. The Chinese government is doing its utmost to implement the project. Meanwhile, India did not participate in the One Belt One Road conference organized by China. India has distanced itself from the project raising questions of sovereignty. Moreover, the long-running conflict with India is the main reason behind it. At the same time, India has questioned China's illegal occupation of the Indian Ocean, including the Bay of Bengal. Conflicting countries in the South China Sea, on the other hand, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, Brunei, could be obstacles to the project. Because the occupation of the China Sea has soured relations with the countries. At the same time China has opposed the creation of a new island. The same problem exists with a strong economic country like Japan. Moreover, there are cultural and economic inequalities. Whereas the underdeveloped countries of the third world are so underdeveloped compared to China that they have lost interest in working with China. However, if the project is implemented by removing all obstacles, it will add a new dimension to the world economy. Regional cooperation and reciprocity will reach a new level. This is sure to be the beginning of a new horizon, especially in underdeveloped countries. However, the possibility of China's sole authority remains. Thanks for watching this video and please subscribe our channel.